When I say strongest Balkan nation, you probably immediately think Romania, but what if I told you Bulgaria is actually so much more broken? Let me show you. Bulgaria does start off in a far worse position than Romania because, spoiler alert, we lost World War I, so we have these terrible army restrictions, and our country just kind of sucks overall, but our focus tree is insanely busted. First focus, power to the Tsar. The rest of the setup is the same as usual, 5 speed, go. Power to the Tsar is done, and that's unlocked the most fun part of Bulgaria, which which is this thing over here, which is literally a clicking simulator. I'm not joking. We have four factions and all of them are capable of screwing us over and we need to either destroy or integrate them. This this is so pain. This is literally cookie clicker. <laughs> At least the royal visit decision is really good. It gives you stability and popularity, but um, sometimes it gives you negative stability. So let's pray to the RNG god. In the meantime, let's do dissolve military union. We need that stability right now. We, we have no stability. <laughs> there we go. Zarboris visits Varna and that gives us five stability and party popularity. Nice. I'm not gonna start clicking these cookie clicker decisions yet because right now they cost 20 political power and down here there's the focus at half the cost and I cannot afford to spend political power. Okay, this strategy requires an insane amount of political power later on so I'm not gonna spend anything. No conscription laws, no mobilization, nothing. What I do need to spend my political power on is a democratic reformer because this focus down here also requires 20% democracy support. I, I don't know why but it does so we gotta get that democratic support up and in the meantime let's get rid of our army restrictions over here. Rearmament focus done, and that's unlocked this decision over here. Demonstrate our policies of peace. Uh, yeah, this is definitely gonna be a peaceful run, right? Right? I'm gonna make an intelligence agency, you'll see why soon. Now that we've demonstrated how peaceful we are, we can go and negotiate rearmament. So hopefully the UK says yes. And we got strikes. <laughs> This is what happens when we don't deal with the stupid factions. Oh my goodness. Well, our country just got worse. Yay. UK says yes, so long as we sign a non-aggression pact with any of these countries. With a little bit of improved relations and some diplomatic pressure from that spy we got, we get a non-aggression pact with Turkey, and uh, there we go. Army restrictions, gone. Okay, this focus is done, and you know what that means. Democratic reformer, you're freaking fired. Get out. You're fired. Okay, let's go down here towards plot against Boris. I love how in literally every single Bulgarian path, even the Tsar path, we get rid of Boris. Like, we either cooing him or we're killing him. <laughs> Everyone just hates Boris. Okay, let's go down here. And before we kill him, yeah, he's still gonna go on tours. Give us that stability. And since that focus is done, all of these decisions costs have now been halved to 10. So let's begin the cookie clicking. Oh yeah, and since army restrictions is gone, my first move is to delete the army. <laughs> I know it's super weird, but you're gonna see why. First faction we can destroy, get out of here. And that gets us a nice PP and a stability bonus as well, which is nice. And also, Boris, go and visit more places before you die. <laughs> Speaking of Boris, plot against Boris is done. We can now do these decisions down here, click. And this is gonna take a while. So in the meantime, let's do this focus here. Basically, let's just justify wars as non-aligned. And literally, right away, we're gonna go and justify on Hungary. And we do National Military Academy. We need that army XP to edit our templates. I love how we are literally planning to kill him, and uh, Mr. Boris is still visiting places and getting us 10 stability. <laughs> okay. Oh no, Boris is dead. The, the whole nation mourns, and in response, let's put his dad on the throne, because why not? <laughs> and also, yeah, those traits are insanely OP. You get 40% more factories from your puppets. That is gonna come in later on. So after this focus, we're gonna move on to Fate of the Balkans, and basically this is gonna let us send ultimatums to all of these countries, and whether they say yes or not depends on the size of our army. And the size of our army is not how much manpower we deployed, it's how many divisions we have. You see where I'm going with this. Let's create a new division, one infantry battalion. <laughs> yes, we're doing this. Train like a hundred of these. I'm not exaggerating. Go, go, go. <laughs> Justification on Hungary done. Just hold on, Hungary. I'll be with you very shortly. <laughs> Ferdinand is back. Let's do a fate of the Balkans. And as you can see, on these decisions, we can see what effects, whether they say yes or not. And uh, high Bulgarian military strength. <laughs> And of course, they say yes, they're scared of my 90 divisions of garbage. <laughs> And yes, that also lets us literally puppet them. With a click of a button, Greece is now a Bulgarian puppet. <laughs> it's so broken. And now they're a puppet, we can request their divisions and inflate our division count even more. So now we have uh, 103 divisions, and we'll send an ultimatum to Turkey, and obviously they say yes. <laughs> and now we puppet Turkey, and now we request their divisions. <laughs> you see where I'm going with this now? And of course, Romania says yes as well, because who is going to mess with 134 divisions? <laughs> and we puppet them as well, we get their insanely huge arm army and Yugoslavia, you better say yes as well. Of course Yugoslavia says yes, we have 165 divisions, probably more than Germany. <laughs> 
Uh, who are they to say no? And obviously, we puppet them as well, just in time to declare war on Hungary, and this is how we're gonna attack Hungary. Our war goal was literally about to expire, honestly. That was pretty close. Let's declare, and uh, we're gonna send our puppet divisions over, because our 90 divisions are completely useless. <laughs> and now that I have actually declared war on Hungary, and they didn't get guaranteed, I'm gonna go and justify it on Italy. I love how we literally just by clicking buttons and making 90 crappy divisions, we just puppeted the Balkans. And yeah, that took all of my political power. I think you see why I saved all of that now. And since we're Ferdinand, we get 40% of our puppets' factories, and now we have 52 factories. <laughs> It's just stupid. How many factories did we just gain? <laughs> Hungary gone. Not a challenge at all. Let's puppet it. Normally, I would annex, but we all know Ferdinand gives insane buffs for puppets, so uh, might as well puppet everything and war reparations. Yes, please. Okay, we have a war goal against Italy. Let's declare on them and call the Yugoslavs in. Let's use the war with Italy to go up to total mobilization. It is going to kind of kill our manpower because I don't actually have enough stability to get women in the workforce, but that's fine. We're using puppet divisions. Manpower completely irrelevant. Now, you might be wondering how I planned on defeating Italy. Well, uh, Italy has Zara, and what I can do is attack Zara, kill off these divisions, and then not take the tile. Italy will keep funneling in more and more divisions, and we just have to kill these divisions over and over again. I know, it's really dumb. The AI is just so stupid. <laughs> okay, there we go. Those divisions gone. Now we just wait for Italy to put more divisions in. As you can see, Italy is just putting divisions back into Zara. <laughs> I must say, PDX did a very good job with the Italian AI. Uh, it's about as stupid as Mussolini was in real life. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! Four Italian divisions are very nice, don't mind if I do Italy. Well, it's been like two weeks, we've taken 2.8k casualties, Italy's taken 120k. <laughs> this is so dumb. I honestly thought they would have fixed this AI bug by now, but nope, it's still a thing. The AI just just... <laughs> the AI is just this stupid. Oh yeah, and since uh, we've puppeted all of these nations, we can click these decisions to just like yoink land from them. Greece, uh, don't mind if I do. <laughs> okay, uh, 400 100,000 Italians have now died in Zara. Um, uh, I, I, we've killed a lot of divisions, and I think it's probably time to start pushing into Italy, because if we don't push into Italy, they might join the Axis via Focus. Right now, they can't join the Axis because they're in a war, so Germany says no, but if they join via Focus, then we are very much screwed, because, uh, yeah, we can't fight Germany quite yet, so I'm gonna probably push into Italy very soon. And, yeah, the Italians are breaking no problem. Uh, yeah, this is not even difficult. <laughs> the, the line is so thin now, it's like one division per time. And they just keep putting more divisions in Zara. <laughs> the Italian AI just doesn't learn. So what's the casualty ratio? 150 to 1. <laughs> <laughs> Got <he! laughs> There we go, Italian Civil War. We're gonna keep the occupied territory, you'll see why soon. And that should just be the end. There we go. <laughs> We've beaten Italy, all right. Annex everything. But also we take all their navy as well. We're gonna be using this against the allies later on. Boom, Bulgaria. Bulgaria is uh, looking pretty chunky. <laughs> this is the Bulgarian colony of Libya. <laughs> all right, let's prepare for war with Germany. We're basically waiting for Germany to declare war on Poland. So as soon as the Poland ultimatum event pops up, that's when we're gonna guarantee Poland, because if I guarantee Poland too early, Germany's gonna put troops on our border. If I wait till the last minute, the German border is literally gonna be wide empty, and I'm just gonna walk right in. I know, this strategy is just insane. Bulgarian integration of the Balkans done, that brings us all the way to the bottom of the focus tree, restore the Bulgarian patriarch, which is just busted. 0.5 extra PP per day, one stability per week, and just an insane amount of compliance. This thing makes compliance just broken. That's why I annexed Italy instead of puppeting them. Okay, let's get this. I'm also gonna send my spy to do diplomatic pressure in the Soviet Union, you will see why very soon. There we go, the ultimatum event has popped up, that means we can now go ahead and guarantee Poland. I'm gonna turn the speed right down, because what I wanna do is when Germany declares war on Poland, I wanna invite them to our faction before they get a chance to join the Allies. Okay, Germany's declared war on Poland, let's answer the call to arms, and let's invite them to our faction. And there we go, Poland has joined our faction instead of the Allies. The reason I wanted to do this is, first of all, we have no manpower, but Poland has an absolute crap ton of manpower, so I can just request some manpower from them after this cooldown expires. Now, the second reason is because I want to invade Germany through Poland. The Soviets are going to start justifying on Poland soon, and if they declare war on Poland whilst all my troops are here, then they're literally just going to get encircled. Now, if I make a non-aggression pact with the Soviets, which we are working on right now, and Poland is also in my faction, then the Soviets can't justify on Poland because they have a non-aggression pact. So 
So two problems solved just by inviting Poland to our faction. Okay, let's start the micro. And obviously, as I expected, Germany's border with us is just wide empty. We gotta declare war on Slovakia manually and call in all our puppets. Yep, the Slovakian border is just wide empty. There are no troops here at all, which is uh, very lucky because Bratislava has a freaking level 9 fort on it. So if there was a division there, yeah, we ain't not getting through that. Also, there are German troops here preparing to attack Poland from Slovakia. So we're probably gonna be able to encircle them, which is gonna be amazing. Right now, Germany's army is honestly not that big. They've only got like, I don't know, like 160 divisions, so not much more than we do. And if we count Poland's divisions, then we actually outnumber Germany. So, uh, yeah. We just took Vienna with no resistance. Well done, Germany. <laughs> and, uh, we actually took Munich. Uh, this is just ridiculous. <laughs> we just walked from Italy to Munich with no resistance. <laughs> Alright, that's all the Slovakian pockets dealt with. Uh, let's send reinforcements to Poland because, yeah, their front line is honestly just wide open. Uh, what are you doing, Poland? Like, honestly, what are you doing? I don't get it. Okay, we've got more German divisions encircled here. Three more, and we're also right outside Königsberg. we got another pocket over here as well. Four divisions. Again, small encirclements are going to help us so much against Germany. Yep, these are some good divisions encircled. And by the way, for context, we've taken 76,000 casualties so far. We've inflicted like 400,000. <laughs> and Poland's inflicted another 100k somehow. I don't know. All right, memo taken. Pocket closed. Next stop, Berlin. Since the start of the war, we've lost 2,000 guns. Guns, and uh, we've uh, destroyed 157,000 German ones. <laughs> That Bulgarian patriarch national spirit is so OP. We already have like 40 compliance in Italy. <laughs> Honestly, we're gaining like 0.2 per day. That's insane. Yo, we got another pocket. Honestly, German line is so thin that we can just slowly pick off divisions one by one. And let's also annex Italy. Boom. Our navy just got like twice as big as well. Nice. Well, we've broken through and uh, we're just walking into Berlin. There's no divisions here. And there we go. Romanian troops under the command of Bulgaria has taken Berlin on behalf of Poland. What? Oh boy, got another pocket. Nice. You know what? Honestly, I'm done. Just full-scale offensive at this point. Okay, there we go. With Frankfurt captured, finally Germany surrenders. We killed like 1.5 million Germans. <laughs> we got 64% of the war score. We got so much war score, we pretty much got everything. Except for Poland, who did some disgusting thing to Czechoslovakia. And France, who liberated Germany in Austria. Disgusting! Anyway, next on the chopping block is going to be the Allies. Unfortunately, by now, the Allies are insane insanely strong because they just didn't do anything in the war with Germany. I did all the bleeding, so they've got like a billion divisions. So the plan is when the time comes to declare war on the Allies, I'm gonna first kick Poland out of our faction. The Soviets are gonna declare war on them because they won't be protected anymore. And uh, the UK will guarantee Poland, Poland will join the Allies, and then the Allies will send all of their troops into Poland, leaving this front wide empty and I can just blitz through the Benelux. That is a plan anyway. In the meantime, I'm gonna train a load more divisions because it's about time we stopped using these crappy divisions that are just like insanely low strength. <laughs> like, my puppet divisions are so bad. We do have to hurry up though, because obviously we're working with a time limit here. We have probably until July of 41 before Japan does its shenanigans and drags the US into the Allies. And if the US joins the Allies, I'm literally just gonna rage quit. There's no point playing anymore. <laughs> It'll literally just be a lost cause. There we go. The UK has guaranteed them. The Soviets have a war goal. This is gonna pull the Allies into a war with the Soviets. Come on, there we go. And now the Allies are at war with the Soviets. And as you can see, they are moving a bunch of troops from here over to the Polish front, and that's gonna leave this front relatively exposed for us to just blitz through the Benelux. As you can see, they are flooding into Danzig and Gdynia. Right, let's declare war on France and just blitz through the Benelux. Without much difficulty, we've broken through. The Dutch have surrendered. We've taken Brussels. Yeah, this is not too difficult. Especially since the French still actually have disjointed government, because remember, they never surrendered. We killed Germany before they got a chance to attack France. Why are you running? Why are you running? Ah! And there we go, France capitulates. Victory on the Western Front, right? I'm gonna clean up this disgusting mess here, and then we're gonna naval invade the UK. It is April, so we gotta really hurry up. Okay, there's no time to lose. Naval invasion of the UK, go. Landed with the help from our cast. We've taken Dover, let's ship in the troops. We gotta blister UK ASAP, or the Americans are gonna join. Okay, they have deorged by attacking us, let's do a counterattack. Just gotta deal with these stupid British naval landings, and also close this pocket around Hull, and that should be victory. UK surrender. Defenders. Oh my god, we just beat the Allies and the Axis. We do share our war score with the Soviets, unfortunately. That's the price we pay for doing the Poland strategy, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. Okay, we pieced out. The borders are disgusting, but it's fine because uh, we're about to take out the Soviets. You know who's worse at drawing borders than the British Empire? Um, apparently Bulgaria. What the hell is this? 
<laughs> what did we do to India? Before we go to war with the Soviets, though, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup in Europe. And also, I might as well give Mr. Joseph a little bit of an embargo because we control all of the world's rubber. So hopefully we can stop the Soviets from producing any more planes. Two hours later. As you can see, I've done an insane amount of expanding. This Prussia of the Balkans national spirit is so OP. And let's just justify war goals so fast. Anyway, Soviet Union, the last conquest. Let's go. And uh, yeah, we've got like two trillion planes over the Soviet Union. And I'm also working on collaboration government. Soviet Union, you're so screwed. <laughs> the number of planes are shooting down and the amount of cast damage you're doing is just insane. Like, oh my goodness. Moscow Falls? Yeah, the Soviet Union is by far the easiest major to fight late game. This war's not even hard. And thanks to our collaboration government, the Soviets are pretty much capped already. And there we go. They capitulated. Let's just annex everything. Oh yeah, I forgot about Finland. Okay, be right back. Now that we control like three continents, I think that proves that Bulgaria is the real strongest nation of the Balkans. Son of a...